the more I played, the more upset I got. Um, is probably about the best set of words I could use to describe my experience with Killzone Shadowfall, a game that came out at the PS4's launch back in 2013. So this game's already over five years old. It's even just to take a step back, like it's crazy that this game was five years ago and the PS4 was five years ago. Um, it just really does not feel like that. And, and you know, even you know, when this video is posted in early 2019, you know, that everybody's already talking about next-gen consoles. It's just kind of crazy. Uh, but to get back to Killzone Shadowfall, I actually bought this game uh, the launch day of the PS4. So I think I had four games that I bought. Maybe it might have just been three. Uh, but I do remember Killzone Shadowfall, Call, uh, excuse me, Call of Duty Ghosts, and then uh, Assassin's Creed 4, because I don't think I had anything else. I think I was gonna, originally going to get Watch Dogs then, um, but then it got delayed uh, until the next year. But, um, yeah, so I remember when I, I was, you know, got the console at midnight, uh, brought it home, and I do believe Shadowfall was the first game I put in. Um, and I played a little bit of it, but not really too much. Uh, I think after that, I might have just had it around because I hadn't started the full campaign. I think I was playing through like Call of Duty Ghosts and Black Flag. Um, so I didn't necessarily want to, uh, you know, start up like a whole nother campaign or something like that. I don't remember what it was, but all I did was actually just play the multiplayer. And I just remember playing that for a little bit and I remember really liking it. Um, but then, you know, I moved on to other games and started playing them. And so I've always kind of had a list of my backlog games, and Killzone Shadowfall has always been on it, and it really wasn't until a few weeks ago that I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna actually play this game, um, and, and I didn't think it'd take too long, um, and it didn't, and like, you know, I thought I could probably get through, get all the collectibles, that kind of stuff, and then play a little bit of multiplayer and then be done with it, um, but going back to the opening statement uh, of the show, I really just really did not enjoy it and and partly i think it's because i just really don't like kill zone to begin with mostly um i had played a little bits of like kill zone two and three and i think i actually still have the original kill zone on uh, P uh ps2 uh, so i think actually secondly i played every kill zone game because then i even played a little bit of liberation on psp um i think i played through mercenary on vita i think i beat it all the way through uh, and I've never really been super fond of the gameplay and in the combat. Um, I always kind of felt like the field of view was really bad kind of stuff. Um, you know, I wouldn't have played or even, excuse me, I wouldn't have bought in this game at all or even probably played if it wasn't for it just being a launch game. And I really like kind of the style, what they were going for with, with Shadowfall. Um, certainly you can kind of tell from trailers that you see there's a lot more color in it um than what you normally see uh in a kill zone game because usually it's just pretty you know drab and gray and gears of war kind of grayish um kind of all over the place but here it actually has color it's got more like outdoor environments it's kind of you know more in space a lot of different colors and it certainly has those missions but i'd also say there's some missions that are also still pretty bland uh as well color scheme wise um, I really don't, there's just a lot of things that I can get into. Um, kind of just want to talk about the controls, um, still a little bit. Um, I just always feel like Killzone games are always kind of slow and a little unresponsive. And I feel like Killzone's always felt that way, which I think, th which is kind of why I see some people enjoy them. Uh, that it's not necessarily a kind of Call of Duty, um, run around and shoot everything kind of game. Um, it's a little more slower, it's a little more methodical. Um, but just kind of how the way that I wanted to play it, um, I just found a lot of the controls just not responding very much. Um, and really what I've just kind of felt like is that every button has like at least like a half second delay until something happens on the screen. Um, so for one I can I mentioned like I want to mention is like crouching. So if I hit circle, um, I'm going to crouch, but it's going to take about a half second before I crouch. So right when I hit circle, my character doesn't crouch. So then I hit it again. So, but then it ends up forcing my character to crouch and then immediately stand back up. And if you're, you know, 
especially playing on hard, like I actually started the campaign, which I'll get into later. Um, you know, it's really bad and it's really frustrating. Like I just, I just want you to crouch and, and sometimes your character gets stuck behind cover. Um, and that kind of led to even more frustrations. So kind of other things, just even like reloading. Um, I felt like, you know, sometimes I would get done shooting and I would hit square to reload, but it wouldn't immediately reload. It's like, I kind of had to mash square each time I was shooting just to make sure that, you know, my weapon was going to reload. Uh, and I also had a lot of problem with kind of the charge weapon. So you have your main weapon, uh, which can cycle between kind of like a charge sniper rifle or just kind of your basic assault rifle. And when you have the charge sniper rifle, you kind of have to have it charged for maybe a good like two, three seconds or something like that. Maybe about like two seconds um, before it can fire. Uh... That weapon, and especially like heavier weapons, uh, kind of like some rocket launchers, it takes a little bit of delay, you know, to like bring it up to your face and, you know, charge it. And there would just be times where I would do that and it just wouldn't work. It, like, we're meaning I would hold down left trigger to pull it up and then I would just press fire and like hold fire, but then I would have it brought up to my face and then it wouldn't fire and then I would just let go and then like eventually it would just you know bring it all the way back down so i'm just like sitting there getting shot at trying to get this thing to work and i think that's was kind of a thing about with the half second uh, kind of delay like i hold it and i hold down left trigger and it doesn't immediately bring it up so then when the half second goes then it finally does bring it up but then even when i've hit you know fire i've already let go of the button so another half second later it just immediately puts the the kind of launch her down and really just I've played some bad first person shooters before um like actually really bad low quality um you can probably check my trophy list uh for that I am not uh I this might be one of the worst worst playing FPSs to me and I think a lot of it is just kind of a I think it's just a preference thing uh I just really don't like um kill zone games all that much i just find them really kind of frustrating um but then even kind of talking a couple more things um we do have the drone uh which is a big part in the single player so it's called an owl and it's got four modes and one of them's uh you kind of select it with a touchpad which kind of thing you want to do um which you know probably you know today ps4 you probably won't have wouldn't have something like that uh attached to the touchpad but since it being a launch game that was kind of what it did uh, and I never had a problem with selecting um, what mode I wanted to use. I actually kind of thought it was kind of cool. Um, but you have a fire mode that you kind of send your little drone out and he'll start shooting guys. Uh, you have an EMP, which can take down people's shields and stun people. Uh, then you also have a kind of like a big barrier wall shield kind of thing that gets up in front of you, like a hollow shield. And then you also have a zip line. So, uh, especially if you're playing on hard the uh, drone going out and firing really just doesn't do much. Uh, it kind of just fires in short little spurts. And it does really well at actually shooting guys, but enemies just have much stronger health that it's going to take a while for it to, for them to actually do some damage. So it's probably the best bet to either use the EMP or the shield uh, to kind of get behind the shield and shoot or kind of use an EMP to stun them. And kind of even talking about controls a little bit with the drone, um... I found out eventually that you have to, you know, wherever you're exactly looking is where the drone is going to stay, like going to originally spawn. So if there's like people below me um, and I am just looking down kind of like slightly to deploy the shield, the drone goes out and the shield literally just is at my feet. Where, like, I can't use this at all. Like, what? why? I did not want to put this right here. Like, I kind of wanted it just to be straight out in front of me, but it's not. It's exactly where I'm looking. So, if I look straight up in the sky, more than likely the drone's going to go all the way, like, really high up where, like, it's not even useful at all. So, it's what's really it's frustrating about that, especially when you're trying to get something to work. You're being shot at. Okay, I need to get behind this. Um, I would call that drone and it would just be like literally just like a foot off the ground sometimes. And it's not like I'm looking super low, but you know, it's like sometimes I can't even, I can't even crouch behind this, this wall that this drone shield just put up. 
So, okay, well, okay, I want I want to recall the drone. Well, now you want to recall the drone to redo it. Well, it has to completely recharge again, uh, which was really kind of nuts. So it led to some deaths as well. Um, you do have some adrenaline packs that are kind of like a, um, it's kind of like your first aid kind of kit, um, where you could use it, um, you know, just randomly and it kind of slows down time. You kind of do this kind of bullet time mode. And I had plenty of frustrations, especially with the charged weapons with that. Um, you know, specifically like how long do I hold the button down to get these things charged? Um, but if your owl is doing something, uh, and you go down, uh, you can't use the owl to actually use one of the adrenaline packs to revive you because it's in like, oh, you know, the owl's recharging. It can't help you right now. So there was plenty of times where, okay, I might die here and I have two adrenaline packs. I'm not even going to deploy the owl because I want this thing to revive me if I go down. Because if I send it to go out shooting or I send it to go out EMP or something, then when it might have to recharge and then I go down, the owl's not even there to help me at all. So there were some kind of tough situations that I just didn't even use the owl. Because uh, even on hard, the adrenaline is actually pretty uh, pretty useful. So yeah, uh, if you go down, you can press L1. If the drone's available, he can revive you. Um, and you can do that like twice, you know, if you have um, adrenaline packs, which are, you know, pretty, pretty abundant. But then again, if you go down, you don't have adrenaline packs and you have to start from the last checkpoint. Um, I do really like the drone because getting to the other part is the zip line, which is actually pretty cool. Um, I really like the gameplay of the zip line. Um, there was kind of some open environments. I'm um, going to talk about that when we kind of get in more of the story segments. Um, but it isn't just necessarily a straight kind of linear corridor shooter, which there are certainly some missions that are that. But uh, there are missions that are kind of more open, and you can go different places, and um, it, it's kind of a, there's kind of moments, I almost want to call it like a Half-Life or kind of Portal kind of thing, where you're kind of just standing there, but the game doesn't necessarily tell you, oh, you know, use your zip line, but so you can be like really high up, uh, and you see this like really large gap, and it's like, well, I think I'm supposed to get over here, but like, I don't see how I'm supposed to get over there, like I don't see a switch or something like that, and like, you know, the game's not telling you, which I love. Um, but then you're like, oh, well, what if I use this zip line and I go over there? And you can definitely use it. Um, it it's really neat. Uh, it's only used a few times uh, in the game. And I would have liked to have seen it more often. I feel like there's a span of probably like three missions. Like maybe even between like four, five, and six. Or five, six, and seven. Something like that. Um, that there's just like, you don't even really have to use the zip line at all. And it's really just kind of an afterthought, I feel like sometimes. Um, there was kind of part like late in the game where you see a big gap and you're like, oh, I can use my zip line. And it's just kind of a, it felt like, you know, if the, if Gorilla Games, the developer was like, okay, well we have this, like, oh, remember, remember this thing we introduced? And it's, it's just kind of a thing that's like, oh, right. Okay. Well, we introduced it beforehand we kind of have to throw, let's throw it in this part. So you don't forget about it. Um, I would have liked to seen more gameplay um, built off of that zip line mechanic, um, which is, uh, kind of disappointing. Uh, I think that's probably one of the biggest highlights of the game for me is using that zip line. So kind of transferring over to the story. Uh, I actually really like the story setup. So it takes place a number of years after kill zone three, which I think I want to say it's almost like more, it's at least more than 10, I think. Um, so Killzone 3, kind of, I guess, spoilers, I didn't actually play that game to completion. Um, but at the end of Killzone 3, uh, Helgan, Planet Helgan, it's war between Helgan and Vecta. Um, Helgan, which has the Hellgast, is basically completely destroyed. Um, million, like, millions of people die, uh, all that kind of thing. And the refugees are granted kind of asylum and a home on Vecta, uh, which was the planet declaring war on the Hellgast. So the refugees are able to take over about half the planet, and in return, they create this giant wall uh, in between the kind of Hellgas side and the Vecton side, which is very much a kind of Berlin Wall sort of thing, where it's like uh, life on both different sides is completely different, um, where, you know, in the Vecta side, there's just a lot of flourishing kind of, you know, 
things are clean and, you know, people are thriving and stuff like that. Um, where then you look over to the Helgan side and it really just kind of looks like poverty, kind of third world country. Um, you know, people are starving, that kind of stuff. So a lot of the game is kind of you actually play as a uh, Vecton soldier um, who, after a little bit of an intro, you kind of see his motivation for the game. I don't really know too much about the... So you're called a Shadow Marshal. But from my recollection, I don't really recall like really what a Shadow Marshal is. The only thing I can assume is that he's just an elite soldier that fights for the Vectans. Um, I don't... I was kind of looking up some stuff. I don't think there was anything ever referenced in the other Killzone games about, oh, you know, if you want to be a Shadow Guardian or whatever, Shadow Marshal, you know, you're like an elite squadron. I think it's just kind of assumed that, like, oh, you know, you're this really kind of highly specialized, you know, kind of soldier to want to do things. Um, that's kind of weird. Um, cause you know, everybody's like, Oh, that's the shadow marshal. I'm like, well, I don't really know who I am. So apparently you know more than I do. And they don't ever really dive into that. Uh, the most story you get is just that, Hey, you're a shadow marshal. Apparently you're kind of a really good soldier. I have no clue. So there are uh, a good amount of missions, um, to the story. It, it's a pretty, I would say short campaign. I mean, you, it's, it's definitely something if you're interested, you can beat it in a weekend. Um, it's not going to take uh, that long. Uh, I, I really kind of like the story setup, and, and it is kind of that a uh, little bit of like a Cold War uh, between the two sides. Um, both sides don't want to completely declare nuclear war on each other. Um, so there's just kind of, you know, sanctions thrown back and forth. There's kind of like little covert ops that are um, there and back. Um, so I, I really feel like the, you know, based on just kind of writing like missions two, three, and four. Um, which are, you know, some of the early missions, I would say are probably the best, and really kind of everything after that was kind of forgettable. Now, Mission 2 is really cool, um, because it's probably the mission you've seen a lot of, uh, if you've seen previews, which is it's kind of like this open forest environment, and that's the big one where they say, okay, well, the objectives are kind of open, and kind of talking about the open mission structure, um, it can be, hey, you know, you can, you know, okay, like, um, to do this, you have to disable the comms, and you have to take out the AA guns, and you have to bury this, you know, ship that crashed um, to destroy, you know, so the Hellgan can't get it, or Hellgas can't get it, that kind of thing. And you can tackle those objectives any way you want. You can do them in any order. Um, you know, it's kind of an open area, and it's really neat to kind of use the zip line to get around. Um, three is kind of more... Um, I would guess I will say like puzzle, puzzly a little bit. So I'd say probably the first third of that mission, you're not even really shooting at all. Um, you're really just kind of exploring and kind of looking at kind of like it's like a desolate space station. It's pretty neat. Uh, and then four, it's kind of maybe like a little bit of both in that respect. Uh, probably got it's got a little bit openness to it, um, but also kind of has some kind of neat. Uh, I guess, kind of motivation to get through the story, um, I'd say. And uh, really kind of talking about the ending, no spoilers uh, at all, but um, it, it kind of sets itself up to be like, okay, you know, we've seen this kind of story a hundred times, um, but it has a little bit of an unexpected ending. I mean, some people might not see it unexpected at all. I kind of was a little surprised by it because I thought it was going to be like, okay, well, here's obviously what's going to happen. And it was it was a little bit, uh, a little bit unexpected, so it was... Uh, it was kind of neat. Um, it allowed some enjoyment um, out of that game. Um, so speaking of a launch game, uh, you know a lot of it's kind of going to be a tech demo um, for the hardware. Because, of course, the only other first-party uh, PlayStation title that came out uh, that that same day was Knack. And I don't really like that game. I uh, played it maybe like last year. I think that game was pretty dull. Um, but so at times, Killzone Shadowfall might be still perhaps the best looking game on ps4 um i don't know the exact name of the hell gas but you know there's like kind of like a sniper and there's just a regular assault um it's kind of one of more like the high tech kind of uh hell gas which i'm sure you've probably seen that one specific it's kind of like more of a kind of almost looks like more, more of a robot like more of a robot than what the other uh hell gas look like 
And just looking at that detail on that character uh, when you're kind of standing by one in the game, it is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, it looks so good. And I'm actually playing on just a standard. I'm actually playing on a launch PS4 on a 1080p television. It looks beautiful. Um, I really want to feel like I could. I really want to take that and just put it up beside stuff like the Shadow of the Colossus remake or Spider-Man or God of War. Uh, I feel like if you just take those and you put them side by side, I just think that the hell gas just look absolutely beautiful. Um, so you have like, you know, impressive things like that. And another thing I think is great is like the buildings, like when you're flying by the cities and stuff like that, um, especially on the Vecta side that, you know, it's kind of more of a futuristic city, uh, flourishing city, um, just looks great. There's like reflections coming off the building, looks great. But I would pretty much say don't look down because you have all of these tall buildings when you're kind of riding on a ship that look absolutely beautiful. But if you look down where it kind of, you know, looks like it's supposed to have like road lights and car lights and, and stuff like that of people driving and whatnot, it just looks like just a flat skybox image uh, just at the bottom. And it looks pretty bad. Um, but, and, and there's some other things as well. So like, there's a lot of, there's textures you'll find that just look pretty bland. Um, there's the other, uh, Vecta soldiers that you fight alongside at times. I don't think they look all that good. Um, perhaps like they just look pretty mediocre, I would say. Um, one part I wanted to mention is there's a couple of times where you're like kind of falling. Um, you know, like if you, you know, you're falling from a high ledge or something like that. And this landing balloon shoots out. And it really I think is just one of the worst looking things I've ever seen on PS4. I mean, it's a launch game, but it's this thing that when this landing balloon kind of uh, puffs out, I guess, it looks like it's moving at like five frames a second. And it just, I, I feel like you could go play an early, I, I think you could probably plug in Resistance Fall of Man on PS3 launch game. And I feel like you can find better textures and just better looking things than that mushiness. I the first thing that came to mind is like I think you could probably go even on the Game Boy Advance and find something that looks better on the Game Boy Advance than this landing balloon. Uh, it looked absolutely terrible. Uh, but other than that, I mean, there's there are some absolutely incredible, beautiful moments uh, in that game. Uh, it's just kind of like that looks beautiful and this looks beautiful, but then everything else is just kind of kind of dull uh, even though if there is some some extra color in it uh, so yeah again I played on hard uh, I mentioned it a little bit ago and I was just super frustrated and I can see um, you listening to this okay well you know you're playing it on hard of course it's supposed to be hard and yes I do agree and I thought the exact same thing uh, but I even went back on easy to get kind of some of the extra trophies or collectibles kinds of things and I was still just as frustrated um, just just doing any menial thing, either it be activating the drone or shooting a guy or trying to use the adrenaline and charging up a shot or getting uh, locked behind a cover mechanic when you're finally actually crouched. Um, yeah, even on easy, I was just still just like, I cannot play this. I just cannot believe how slow this is. Um, and again, I, I think it is just kind of a personal preference um, thing, but I, I certainly did not uh, really enjoy much of the gameplay. Um, I think it's actually pretty good for a launch game. Um, you know, I think maybe I didn't look at the Metacritic score, but I think I remember when it came out at launch, it was probably about like eight, I would say, like eight to 8.5 out of 10, um, which I'd say that's probably, you know, pretty, pretty accurate. And maybe I would say that's just, you know, the 2013 thing. Um, it's kind of hard to believe that this game's already five years old and it feels like five years feels like forever ago. Um, and it kind of is in technology, video game space. Uh, but I feel like if this game kind of came out today, like even if it looked better at times, uh, I think just from the gameplay um, and everything, I, I think it'd be pretty mediocre. I, I think if this game came out today, I think you'd probably be looking at like a seven, probably. Um, it's certainly nothing remarkable, um, but it's I don't think it's necessarily a bad game. I think it's just kind of one of those games that, you know, it'd be like, well, that was... That was the new Killzone game, which I think some people kind of feel that way even when it came out at launch. Um, so there's there's good collectibles. Uh, there's like comic book pages uh, that you can pick up each mission, and you kind of put them together, and it kind of creates a comic book. Um, that's neat. Uh, one of the extra little 
notes that I written down here was the audio logs um, that you pick up. And I actually really think these are pretty cool. Um, there's a lot of audio logs in games that are just like, why am I listening to this? They're just, they're just not interesting. They, they try to make something relatable to the story um, instead of creating lore of their own, I would say. Um, where a lot of audio logs I listen to, I'm like, whatever, like, I don't really care. Um, which I think of what I really enjoy about these audio logs is they actually do play when it's kind of a plus and minus, but it actually plays like when you're actually walking around the environment and it really did feel like something like Bioshock and not just because you're still playing and you listen to the audio log. It's because I feel like the acting for these audio logs are very good. Um, like, you know, even just stuff like it's like a torture sequence or, some person talking to their child or something about that, about a war getting ready to break out or something. Um, just really believable. Um, I think it's, I think it's like super great. I think they're absolutely great to listen to on their own. And I do say on their own, because these audio logs are incredibly long. Uh, I would feel like, you know, going to either Bioshock or something like that. These audio logs aren't too long. Like they're, maybe a good maybe minute maybe tops maybe a minute and a half i guess at the longest perhaps um but i felt like these audio logs go on forever and there would be times where i'd go through a mission and i would actually pick up more than one so i'd pick up an audio log and then it would start playing but then by the time i get i can find another audio log before this audio log was even done and then so both of the audio logs are playing on top of each other. And then you hit like a mission, you know, checkpoint. And then like the person you, your commander gets on the line and starts talking to you as well. And there is just so much talking at the same time. I got two audio logs and then the main character like talking to his boss. And I was just about to lose my mind. And the thing is, is that if you pause the game, that doesn't stop it. Like, it's not a thing you're like, I don't want to listen to this anymore. There was literally a way that I could not find a way to, sh like, stop all of this sound at the same time. Um, I really just had to stand, stay put and just turn the, t turn the volume down on my television. I was just absolutely losing it. Um, but, um... Yeah, but other than that, I really like the audio logs. I think they're actually really well done. They're just uh, maybe a little too long for for my liking. Um, but that's that's mainly it. Um, there were some other things I'd written down. Um, one of them I'm thinking about is uh, there's a scanner uh, that also works um, in the single player where it's like you're standing still. Um, you, you, like the scanner only works at standing still, and it's kind of like an echo location, kind of like a UAV, whatever you want to call it in like Call of Duty. Um, but yeah, it only works when you're standing still, which, I mean, it just kind of felt a little weird to me. Like, I wish I could, like, kind of walk and also use it, not have to completely stand still to use it. Um, that's not really a complaint. It was just kind of weird to me, I guess. Um, again, I mean, I got used to it fine, and it was okay. I just thought it was a little weird that, like, you can't use it while you're moving. You have to just stand perfectly still for it to be used. Um... But other than that, I kind of want to just touch on multiplayer, I guess, for a quick sec. Um, I actually thought it was pretty fun. I like the multiplayer a heck of a lot more than I like the single player. Um, I still think there's kind of plenty of cheap deaths in the game. Um, it's not as fast-paced as something like Call of Duty, but I still feel like the time to kill is still pretty pretty fast as well. Um, so kind of comparing it to a little bit to like Halo, um, you know, Halo 2, 3, Reach, something like that. And I don't know about current Halo, like Halo 5. Um, but there's things like if you are not on top of your game, even if you get the jump on somebody and start shooting a really experienced player first, that experienced player could turn around and, and kill you before you kill him. Even if you have the, the kind of edge on him. Um, but in kind of the age of Call of Duty where the time to kill is very fast i mean if you're behind somebody they're dead like you're not going to be able to have a shot against him when i think of something kind of slower pace like kill zone i kind of want the time to kill to be maybe even a little bit longer than it is right now and there's still times where it's kind of a slower pace game where you want to take your time 
Um, but it's still just super easy for just somebody to get behind you and just kill you just like that. Um, which I, it's, it's a little weird to me. And I, I think it is definitely different than it, it's a multiplayer that's different from even a call of duty or even a battlefield, um, which I, I think it's good. And that's what I like about it is that when I play the kill zone multiplayer and re regardless of game, it doesn't really feel like exactly like another game out there, which is, which is really nice. And as much as I love like the resistance franchise, um, even like resistance three, um, as much as like, I love that game. I love playing that game online. You can still kind of tell that like, you know, this is kind of like call of duty roots a little bit. Um, whereas kill zone does kind of feel like it stands on its own, uh, which is, which is really nice. Uh, there are daily challenges. Um, you get daily login for your points, and you get points to unlock these crates that either give you, like, booster items and um, kind of, you know, skins for your drone or your character or something like that. Um, there is kind of a lot of, I felt like, paid DLC, I guess. Um, so there's, like, there was a new, there's three classes, like, Support, Assault, and Scout. Um, but then there was, like, a, a DLC expansion that... Um, completely gave like, it's like a whole new other class with its own unlocks and challenges and stuff like that, um, which is pretty neat. And then there also was, uh, I don't know if it was intercept exactly was the name, um, but it was like more like a co-op kind of horde mode. Um, that's all paid DLC. Um, but if you're actually playing the multiplayer, uh, all of the actual maps that they've released, uh, post launch are free. And there's a link right on the uh, multiplayer page of the game that, you know, takes you exactly to the PlayStation Store. You can download all the new maps. Um, don't have to pay anything extra. Um, absolutely love that. I think more games are starting to do that as well. So they'll have paid DLC for unlocks or something like that. Uh, but all of the maps will be free. So you're not playing with friends and one friend doesn't have this map, but the other one does and that kind of thing. I think they're avoiding that, which is, which is really nice because that kind of happened for a while. Uh, so the last thing, even with multiplayer, that uh, I absolutely love, um, maybe the second best thing of the game, which I'll, I'll mention the first uh, in a sec, but uh, Killzone has been doing this for a while, I guess, but there are bots in multiplayer. So if you play 24-player Warzone, 12 players on a team, and a game that came out late 2015, excuse me, 2013... There's not a ton of people playing online, um, which there are still people, um, but certainly not, you know, maybe 24 to get you in a complete war zone match, you know, especially with other game modes that the game has. Um, and it allows to do more than one match. And I'm sure there's maybe more than 24 players online um, at that exact given time. Uh, but I played in matches where I would say there were maybe like six real human players and the rest of the teams were filled in with bots and the bots aren't kind of pushovers either um there were plenty of objective ones where the bots were just absolutely crushing us um and so for kind of moments where you know a bot with a sniper gets you from way across the map you're know, like that's it's almost like cheating it's like playing, trying to play the computer in an arcade game it's like like ah oh, it's no way uh, but then there's also times where, you know, a bot could be standing literally right in front of you and you just shoot it and it doesn't even shoot back. Um, so there's a lot of uh, kind of pluses and minuses um, with that. But absolutely, I feel like all games should have bots in like online multiplayer and don't call it ranked. Do a quick match or something like that. Um, but... Uh, I'm, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not a developer, so I'm not saying like, oh, it's easy. You know what? Just put bots in. I'm sure it's easy. I'm sure it's incredibly hard to do that. Um, but I think about with so many online games coming out now these days, and it's so hard to get kind of any kind of like market market penetration with, you know, games like Fortnite and PUBG and Call of Duty and Destiny and all that stuff. Um, I just feel like there's there's plenty of smaller games out there that just have absolutely nobody playing. Um, and if I wanted to play 24 player Warzone and I have, there's six people online or something like that, I can't play this match. I can't play this game at all online. Um, so I absolutely love, um, that you can still play multiplayer, still get unlocked, still do those kinds of things, even if, um, nobody's really online. Um, so kudos to Gorilla for doing that. I think Call of Duty Ghosts 
might have had some squads bot thing, but I don't think you, you it wasn't ranked or anything. It was just an offline multiplayer match. Um, but yeah, I think more games should have bots in multiplayer. I think that's an incredible thing that Gorilla is doing. Um, but going back to the actually the number one thing this game does that I absolutely love that every game should do more than having bots in multiplayer is that when you start this game up, when you hit X on the dashboard of the PS4, when it's loading, you get the little Gorilla logo, Gorilla Games. And then right after that, the main menu slides in. There's no developed by so-and-so, so-and-so using the whatever, whatever engine with help from whatever, you know, licensed by whatever, you know, it's just right to the game. Uh, I remember playing this when I got it at launch. Remember I played just a little bit. I felt like this is next gen, man. We are never going to have to look at intro screens ever again. And boy, was I wrong. Because I think since then, Killzone Shadowfall is the only game that has done that. And maybe PS5 launch, Killzone Shadowfall 2, maybe Knack 3. We might just have, you hit the X button, you're in the main menu. You're not... Look at all those things. And as somebody who doesn't really use the rest mode feature on their PS4, because kind of had some problems with it, who actually, you know, closes games and turns off the PS4, I'm really tired of these things loading up all day. I think I think there should be more games that do this. So, was Killzone Shadowfall a great game in my eyes? Not really. Did it have some incredible ideas that I really enjoyed and would like to see more of? You betcha.